In this problem, we have a triangular region, which I'll shade here in blue so you see it. And we're basically going to rotate this region about the x-axis, and then we're going to find the volume of the resulting solid. And we're going to do it with the disk method. So when you're using the disk method, uh, the first thing you should always do is draw your rectangle. So with the disk method, the rectangles are always perpendicular to your axis of revolution. So when I draw my rectangle, it must look like this. It has to be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So in the disk method, again, rectangles are perpendicular. The next step would be to identify big R of X. So big R of X is always the full distance from the far end of the rectangle all the way to the axis of revolution. So that would be big R of X. And now it's hopefully easy to see that big R of X is just our function, right? This is the graph of this function. So big R of X is simply parentheses negative X plus eight quantity, and that's it. <laughs> I was gonna do something wrong. So this is equal to the definite integral and it has a pi, the disk method has a pi. I was thinking ahead, zero to eight, and then we square it. Now, for some reason, I was thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to square it. No, no, one step at a time. <laughs> so this is the formula, right? It's big R squared. That's why I wrote the parentheses there. I was getting ready to square it. I'm like, no, you square it when you put it in the, in the integral. So now we have to figure this part out. This part is, is the tedious part. So the pi goes here, stays here. And then we can, we can multiply this out. There's a formula for this. If you have A plus B quantity squared, you square the first one, so you get a squared. You multiply these two, and you multiply by two, so you get two ab. And then you square the last one, so you get b squared. So here you would square the first one, so you get x squared. You multiply these two, and you double it, so that would be negative 16x. And you square the last one, so you get 64. Not so bad. So we are here. And then dx. Um, so now we just integrate. So this is pi. I'll leave the pi on the outside. This is x cubed over three, just using the power rule, minus 16x squared over two, again, using the power rule, plus 64x. And we're going from zero to eight. Let's keep going. So you plug in the eight first. I'm gonna leave the pi on the outside. So pi bracket, you have eight cubed over three, minus, this is really uh, an eight here. So it'll be eight times eight squared plus 64 times eight. Minus zero, when you plug in zero, you subtract and then you plug in zeros for all these X's, but they all go away, so good stuff. This is equal to, let's keep going, pi. Let's see if we can do it by hand. Um, I have a calculator with me here, but let's 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 have fun. Let's see, one third, uh, eight cubed. This is minus eight cubed, right? Because it's eight to the one times eight squared. This is also eight cubed because sixty-four is eight squared. So eight squared times eight is eight cubed. Kind of fun. Oh, that's fun. Look at that. That that's just that's just luck. <laughs> that's what that is. Uh, eight cubed. Okay, I'm gonna reach for my calculator. Uh, eight cubed. 8 cubed is 512, good stuff. So you get pi times uh, 512 over three, which is actually the correct answer. So uh, kind of an interesting problem. Uh, the hard part is setting it up. And again, in this case, it was just big R. And remember, big R is the full distance. And there was no little r. Little r is the distance between the close end and the axis. In this case, little r of x is equal to zero. Whenever little r is non-zero, people call it the washer method. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.